Aesop Fables, Volume Three. The Vain Jackdaw. One day, Jupiter decided to create a sovereign over the birds. He made a proclamation that on a certain day, all birds were to present themselves before him. At which time he would choose the most beautiful among them to be king. The jackdaw, knowing his own ugliness, searched through the woods and fields and collected the feathers which had fallen from the wings of more colorful birds and stuck them in all parts of his body, hoping thereby to make himself the most beautiful of all. When the appointed day arrived and the birds had assembled before Jupiter. The jackdaw also made his appearance in his many feathered finery. But when Jupiter proposed to make the jackdaw king because of the beauty of his plumage, the other birds indignantly protested, and each plucked from him his own feathers, leaving the jackdaw nothing but a jackdaw. Moral: It is not only fine feathers that make a fine bird. The crow and the pitcher. A crow, half dead with thirst, came upon a pitcher which had once been full of water. But when the crow put its beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found that only very little water was left in it, and that he could not reach far enough down to get at it. He tried and he tried, but at last had to give up in despair. Then a thought came to him. Ah. And he took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. At last, at last, he saw the water mount up near him. And after casting in a few more pebbles, he was able to quench his thirst and save his life. Moral: Little by little does the trick. The milkmaid and her pail. Patty the milkmaid was going to market, carrying her milk in a pail on her head. As she went along, she began calculating what she would do with the money she would get for the milk. I'll buy some fowls from Farmer Brown," said she, "and they will lay eggs each morning, which I will sell to the parson's wife. With the money that I get from the sale of these eggs, I'll buy myself a new dimity frock and a chip hat. And when I go to market, won't all the young men come up and speak to me? Polly Shaw will be that jealous, but I don't care. I shall just look at her and toss my head like this." As she spoke, she tossed her head back. The pail fell off it, and all the milk was spilled. <laughs> Poor Patty, the milkmaid, was left with nothing but an empty pail. Moral: Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. The fox and the crow. A fox once saw a crow fly off with a piece of cheese in its beak and settle on a branch of a tree. That's for me," said the fox as he walked up to the foot of the tree. "Good day, Mistress Crow," he cried. "How well you are looking today! How glossy are your feathers! How bright your eye! I feel sure your voice must surpass that of other birds, just as your plumage does. Let me hear but one song from you that I may greet you as the Queen of Birds." Flattered by the fox's compliments, the crow lifted up her head and began to caw her best. <laughs> But the moment she opened her mouth, the piece of cheese fell to the ground, only to be snapped up by Master Fox. That will do," said the fox. "That was all I wanted," he said as he trotted off, licking his lips. Moral. Do not trust flatterers. The fox and the stork. At one time, the fox and the stork were on visiting terms and seemed very good friends. 
So the fox invited the stork to dinner, and for a joke, put nothing before her but some soup in a very shallow dish. This the fox could easily lap up, but the stork could only wet the end of her long bill in it. The poor stork left the meal as hungry as when she began. I am sorry," said the fox. "The soup is not to your liking." Pray do not apologize," said the stork. "I hope you will return this visit and come and dine with me soon." So a day was appointed when the fox should visit the stork. But when they were seated at table, all that was for their dinner was contained in a very long-necked jar with a narrow mouth, in which the fox could not insert his snout. So all he could manage to do was to lick the outside of the jar. I will not apologize for the dinner," said the stork as she slurped her soup from the jar. Moral: One bad turn deserves another. The fox and the lion. When first the fox saw the lion, he was terribly frightened and ran away and hid in the wood. However, the next time the fox came near the king of beasts, he stopped at a safe distance and watched the lion pass by. The third time they came near one another, the fox went straight up to the lion and passed the time of day with him, asking him how his family was and when he should have the pleasure of seeing him again. Then. Turning his tail, he parted from the lion without much ceremony. Moral: Familiarity breeds contempt.